when do you recommend people get heart surgery and when can you instead use diet and lifestyle? Are there times when heart disease is too advanced to treat with diet and lifestyle? There are two wonderful studies. Uh, one was Orbita from uh, England, and the other uh, was ischemia uh, at the American Heart Association meeting in uh, November of 1999 in Philadelphia. Now, in ischemia, there were 5,000 patients. To qualify, they all had to have, that is, for, the, for your audience who doesn't know what the word ischemia means, that is a less than normal blood supply to the heart where the patient has a diagnosis of coronary artery disease. And uh, they divided those 5,000 patients into three groups. One was optimal medical therapy plus stents. One was optimal medical therapy plus bypass. And the third was optimal medical therapy alone. Now, before I tell you the results of that, remember, none of these patients were an emergency. Everybody has agreed that when a patient is in the middle of having a heart attack, a stent or bypass can be absolutely life-saving. However, when they're done electively, this is, this is a different situation. When they look, when they, the results of those studies after five years, between those three groups, no difference in terms of major coronary events, heart attack, stroke, and death, okay? Now, my criticism of the study is, compared to what our patients are receiving, which is whole food, plant-based nutrition, do you suppose that for five years, those 5,000 patients, not one of them was having a drop of oil? <laughs> now, they were all eating green leafy vegetables six times a day. They were never eating dairy. They were never eating sugar. No, it was mostly, mostly with drugs. And the, uh, but the, the, the whole point of the study though, is that before you subject to these patients to the invasive techniques of stents and bypass, which clearly have more deaths. I mean, you can, the deaths when you have a stent is of 1.2 million people having stents, 1% will die. That's 12,000 people. If 500,000 people are getting a bypass, the mortality is higher at 3%. And that's 15,000 people who will die that year. And how many, if it, eating a diet would do that? <laughs> so we've got a ways to go, especially uh, if we can get these investigators to increase the the plant-based diet uh, in a manner that will help the patients remain heart attack proof. Of all the people you've advised over the last 30 years who follow your advice, what were the results? What percent got to their optimal blood sugar, blood pressure, and weight? What percent reversed major health issues? And what percent didn't get the expected results? Yeah, for that, I think we uh, to talk now about the second study I did because after the first study, although we had absolutely striking results of disease reversal, it was, as I mentioned, it was small. And of course, our critics said, Dr. Esselstyn, this is a small study. It wasn't randomized. Uh, it's a, your diet is very strict. Um, and I'd like to address that for a minute. When people say that our diet is strict or extreme, uh, what we are simply doing is this. We're simply taking away the foods that every time they eat, you eat them, they injure the lining of the artery. If we were to take our diet to Okinawa, they would first thing they do, they would look at us with a quizzical look on their face and said, Jesus, you guys have finally gotten around. We've been doing this for 500 years. What made you catch on? <laughs> So the most severe extreme strict diet is really the typical Western diet that 98% of Americans are eating that guarantees that they were gonna perish from some sort of chronic illness. So let's get that extreme stuff out of the way. So what are the results with our second study? This time 200 patients, two were lost to follow up. So 
Well, we've followed him up close to close to four years. Uh, <clears throat> several things were ap apparent. We were criticized because uh, others who have tried it said they, their patients wouldn't comply. Well, of those uh, 198 patients, 177 were compliant with our diet. That's 89.3%, almost 90%. Now people are astounded. They, how, Dr. Esselstyn, do you get 90% with that diet? A couple of points to be made here. If you're going to have a patient make a lifestyle change, you've got to show the patient respect. The only way that I know to show a patient respect is to give them our time. And what we're doing now, once a month, I conduct a single day, five and a half hour intensive counseling seminar where patients are gonna learn all about how they created their disease and precisely how we are going to empower them as the locus of control to halt and to reverse their disease. Now, also, since I'm a little old fashioned and compulsive, uh, my secretary will give me a list. Usually we limit this to 18 or 20 patients. She'll give me a list of who's coming with their phone numbers 10 days before the seminar. And I will personally call every one of them myself so I can get my arms around their story and at the same time permit them an opportunity to ask questions of me so that coming to the seminar, we have a strong platform from which we can all move forward. So that was some um, um, important thing, a bit of background and why it is I think we are achieving that degree of compliance. Now, the other uh, thing that of the 177 patients who were compliant, close to four years, one patient had a major cardiovascular event, small stroke. When he was in China, he had a tendency to have high blood pressure, totally was eating off the economy, all that salt, his hypertension soared, got a small stroke in his cerebellum, but recovered. Now, what about those patients who are not compliant? Those 21 patients who are not compliant, 62% had disease progression. So on the one hand, six tenths of a percent, one patient out of 177 who misbehaved. So it's, I don't know how it can be more powerful than that. 